Welcome to Alligator Garage. Uh, today we're hanging out with Clint Cannon here, owner of ATS. And it seems like it, there's a, a pretty common topic uh, when it comes to the Dodge or the Ram uh, platform. And it's the failure points of the 68 RFE transmission. And it's difficult to actually pinpoint the exact issue of uh, the transmission, but a lot of it seems to come from uh, valve body pressures and uh, failure points with that. Does that sound about right? Yeah, you pretty much hit the nail on the head on that one. The elusive 68 RFE has been <laughs> Very been problematic a, for a, a very thorn long in the heel time for, for many, many you years. Know, <clears throat> Chrysler um, came out with this transmission in 2007 and literally hasn't really changed it. You know, in the brand new trucks, it's still the same training. Right. Um, fortunately, the aftermarket, you know, we have had lots of experience with the 68 RFE, the converter, the valve body, the electronics, kind of all of it. And we really understand how to make these things work. And, you know, I never really thought I'd say this, but it is a very well um, working transmission once you upgrade some of the components. You wouldn't have said that um, five years ago, 10 years ago. No, I, w I really wouldn't have. You know, in fact, it's, it's been a challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. it really has been because the, the manufacturers just, they just made it so cheap. You know, right. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's just, it's very inexpensive. What we have laid out here is some valve body components, which is the brain of the transmission, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, you go off the pan and then you have the valve body. Right. And it literally is the brain and the nervous system, and then it everything what to do when clutches yeah. to yeah all the clutches that apply and you know the 68 RFE you know it's a clutch to clutch training which means you always have two clutch packs applied you know of the of the five basically four gear sets or clutch packs that are in there mm -hmm. you always have any two applied and any two basically gets you a gear for from first to set for from first to six right so you know if you have three clutches on. Um, momentarily then you get a bind up and you have problems and that's where the cross links come in or if you only have a clutch partially applied then you have a low pressure problem and then it slips, it slips right. and you know the clutches are not designed to slip they're designed to engage or completely release so if you have anything in the middle you know you have big problems right and you know it's, it's you're either delaminating or you're slipping and toasting yeah, the transmission yeah, smoking it either way yeah so um, as you were hitting on is you know there's, there's two major elements of the transmission on the 68 to make it work you know, one is the tranny, the box. You know, it has to all work hydraulically right. and everything has to work, but you also have to send it the right signals. You know, and the 68 RFE, of course, the engine was not designed or the tranny wasn't designed to hold any power level over stock. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really designed to only tow so much. So when you start adding additional weight, like we all do in the, in the real world, or right. we start turning the power up just a little bit, or you get, you know, just a higher mileage tranny, then the transmission begins to slip um, just normally so you know it could really use some add-ons so with the factory tranny only making 160 psi and it's actually physically limited to only make 160 psi clamping force right. that two, two areas have to be addressed you have to modify the valve body so the transmission has the ability to actually go over 160 right. so you can modify the valve body which we have in the co-pilot which is part of this kit which is the separator plate um, and of course, we add gaskets to it as well, which is another um, add-on. But adding, putting the separator plate between these two components, right, dropping the valve body and then just putting this plate in, basically gives the transmission the physical ability to go up to 300 psi. And then, because the 68 RF is a closed-loop line pressure system, that means the computer is commanding a pressure and it has to see it and it has to come back. Right. The computer doesn't ever command above 160. So the way we address that is we add on this guy, which is a harness that plugs into the valve body and then plugs into your factory harness. Right. And all That's these guys in plug into the speed sensors and the, and the, the map sensor and it looks at engine load and looks at um, commanded load from the TPS. Mm -hmm. um, so this computer understands, you know, see it senses all these values, how fast you're going, everything else. And this little guy called the co-pilot controls the training so as engine load goes up then we bring line pressure up to 300 psi right. and what's actually really cool about that as well since it's a true it's not just a pressure riser it's an actual transmission controller so it is truly controlling the transmission and it's giving feedback to the tcm so the tcm is happy the transmission control module right. you know if it sends if it asks for a request it needs to get it back whether that's lower pressure or converter in or whatever so we tell the computer, you know, that he's happy. We make the transmission command up so it has more line pressure at the higher engine loads, which means that we can swing that line pressure. So when you're cruising down the road, you know, which 95% which of your driving is just cruising down the road, you know, at very light throttle, mm -hmm. 
then we run that transmission pressure down, you know, way down like stock, so it doesn't have the parasitic the drag yeah. and it keeps the temperatures down. Yep. So, you know, this is really about drivability. It's not just about holding max power, um, but it's about having it, you know, in the in the right gear when it's commanded. So it applies that gear, it holds, um, keeps it running cool, and then of course when you put your foot into it, you put your trailer behind it. Big fifth wheel, for instance, you know, that's generally where the, all the damage happens is right. really heavy towing. Then we run that pressure up based on boost, engine load, and it clamps everything down, gives you what you need. Now with uh, your guys' gasket kit here, is that kind of the fix to, you know, prevent the deflection of the valve body? Because it seems like this is what really starts to separate between, you know, uh, heat and cooling temperatures and and starts bleeding off at these other veins. Is that kind of the fix for that? It really does. Um, you know, what you're talking about here, this is kind of your, what you call your channel casting. And these guys are inside the trannies. You know, these trannies are run up to 230 degrees sometimes. Right. And that kind of temperature warps them. So this plate will warp. Um, this guy warps. That's what kind of bolts together. And of course, you have the separator plate that fits between it, this metal plate. The factory ones. And, there, isn't it? Correct. So we build a much thicker separator plate mm -hmm. that drops down on the on the channel plate, of course, and then you have gaskets on both sides. So these gaskets seal everything, and it, it just absolutely gets rid of all the cross leaks. Right. Um, very, very effective. I mean, it's, it's, it's really effective now. And that's just because of the of the bad material they're using and the mix probably of how thin everything is? And yeah, it's just, the, it's just the cheap aluminum. You know, it's just a kind of a pressure cast aluminum, which is, it's a real mystery metal. And, um, you know, and what we're talking about here is for a lower mileage training. You know, if you have a fresh transmission, right. you know, and, you know, 50, 60,000 miles and it's not been overheated and the fluid looks in, to be in good shape, then you can be very successful by just adding the co-pilot with the separator plate gaskets. Kind of a preventive um, maintenance deal too. Exactly. Yep. And then now if you have a transmission that's a little higher mileage, you know, over 60,000 miles, then Often, you know, the transmission might be okay, but most likely the valve bodies begin to wear. Some deeper issues. Exactly. Yeah, and maybe not just, you know, maybe not necessarily. You know, the transmission if it's never fail safe, if it's not slipping mm -hmm. in the higher gears, you might be fine. You might be able to just upgrade the valve body. Right. And if that's the case, then what you don't get with this kit, with just the separate plates and gaskets, is a completely redesigned valve body. You'll see here we did a cross section of some of the components. You see these wear marks. I mean, they're severely. And this is what a 60, 80,000. <clears> this is probably miles. about 80,000, 80, 90,000 miles. And it's just, this is your factory piston, right? So these are the ceiling rings. And you get an idea what's going on here is each one of these is an accumulator. So it has a spring in it. And when the clutch pack fills up, each one of these has a clutch pack and it accumulates fluid to soften right. the shift. Problem is, these things are going back and forth. And the big problem with this design is, is these guys, this is actually fully loaded with the delivery ring, so you see how it happens there. I mean, it, it doesn't seal. We can hear and, it's just aluminum on aluminum. It's, right, it's and, that's, and that, well. that's what creates all the wearing. So what we've done is with a with one of our upgraded valve bodies, we bored them all out, um, you know, as far as the, there, yeah. yeah, put a cross hatch in it to hold the oil, just like you, in a high performance engine. Right. Then build oversized accumulators, and then of course put Viton rubber sealing rings in them. So they actually go in and seal, and you can see even that one, how, how well it seals and what that allows is one, you're never gonna go aluminum to aluminum. Right, you're not gonna get and, that wear in there like, right. like the factory So it just, it just lasts forever, it just, it just doesn't wear out. So you get on that, that on all the accumulators. Of course, we surface them all on both parts. You know, the, they're generally, you know, 15 to 17 thousandths warpage. Right. Um, just because of, you know, it just basically warps over Which time. It doesn't take it's much heat. for the bleed off. In it those it doesn't. Not and of course, you know, the factory doesn't use any gaskets. Right, it's just metal to metal, which is just, you know, not... not just a design flaw right, yeah, you know, right there. Certainly not the best thing. And then really late model valve bodies, um, 11 and newer, Chrysler started anodizing them. See how it's kind of a blacker color? Yeah. And that was in a belief that it maybe would make a little bit harder surface. Right, do um, a hand, I, I assume it's a hard anodize. It, correct, yeah. And unfortunately, you know, the, the idea is pretty decent, but you see what's happening there. They're wearing out. It's still wearing, yeah. Yeah, so it's... Well, when you're a metal, metal contact, doesn't matter if it's hand, uh, hard to anodize or not, it's going to... Exactly, wear. exactly. So, you know, upgrading some of these components, and then, of course, you know, when these things are upgraded, um, the hydro hydraulic integrity is solid. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about a training that not only is going to hold the power very, really well, um, but it's going to hold it for a very long period of time. Right. You know, so, so doing the co-pilot, getting these, you know, get your pressure where it needs to be. Now, one of the um, things I want to point out is we offer the co-pilot um, in two different applications. Mm -hmm. um, one is the tow box, so we call it the tow pilot, if you will. Right. Um, and then, of course, the race um, version. 
which is complete lockup. So there's two different versions. You literally generally have, if you're just looking for reliability, keeping the training cool, um, you know, something as basic and, and more uh, cost effective, then the um, tow version works really well. Um, if you are more about performance and you want to actually force lockup and get the converter clutch engaged right. um, under power, then we have the race version. Um, which is a full lockup version, which is absolutely dynamite. I mean, it's incredible. It changes the driving characteristics of these trucks um, night and day. Um, but either one, you know, we'll, we'll get, the, get the job done as far as reliability goes. So it's uh, more a matter of preference. And like I said, it's all plug and play. So no splice wires. For sure. Plug it in and go. And then there's some diagnostic functions built into the box as well. So you can actually monitor your line pressure, oh, okay. uh, monitor your boost pressure um, by the three settings which is uh, really popular and that's why it goes right inside the cab so you can watch it as you're driving. So, you know, there's some, there's some drivability components to it so you make sure your transmission's operating properly. You know, right. the box will tell you. Right. So it's uh, <coughs> pretty well thought out and uh, say easy to use. It takes, it only takes about an hour to install. You know, yeah, it seems pretty, pretty simple. I mean, it seems like the, the longest part, I mean, other, beside actually doing a full valve body is actually running the wires and getting them all tucked up, zip tied to where it needs to be. Even the valve body side of the install is not going to be too difficult. You're talking about taking a dozen or so bolts out of the pan and dropping that out, um, replacing the valve body, and you're pretty much good to go. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, pretty, pretty the great. Pilot. Yeah, it's not much more work than doing a training service. Right. So, if you have any questions on these parts, check out our website at alligatorperformance.com, um, or give us a shout on. Facebook, Instagram, or uh, shoot us an email. Either way, uh, we'll take care of you and uh, answer any questions you might have.